We are on our way back to the hotel. Look at poor Addie Bear. She is a trooper. <laughs> she almost fell asleep at 9.30 at the sale, and we had another hour and 20 minutes. So, of course, all of you guys know what we'd done. We went over to the sale. Originally, the plan was just to go over the sale for a little while, let the kids experience the sale, and then leave. Now, when I got there, uh, when I got there, I hit a couple of horses on a list that I'd made a while ago. And obviously, Memento Mori's brother, Neuromancer, was on there. So was 821. One of our, well, he's a client now, I guess, Joel, um, had messaged me about a week and a half ago and said, you know, could you, what are your thoughts on 821? When I looked at the video, I said, it looked a little off right front, but those babies aren't lame. They must have an abscess or something. It's not a big deal. Um, I said, look a little off right front, but a nice horse otherwise. It's hard to tell with the big bell boots. And the I don't like that all the time. So I went, I wanted to see the horse. I saw the horse walking in the back ring. You know, Amy had bought a ready for money early ground. Was it Judy's money? Mm -hmm. Had bought Judy's money at the earlier sale, the first sale for us. A great filly. Broke nice, looks nice on the track. This filly here, as I was saying to some of the other, and take this with a grain of salt, please, because it's, it's not always accurate and it, it's never that easy. I said, when you buy well-bred horses, if the price is low enough, it's almost a free horse, right? You have that safety net. They claimed Flash Fly Office last week. That could have been a loss if that was a gelding. A number of our fillies have and will sell this fall. They've sold in the past also, where we got big chunks of money out of them. So when you buy a well-bred horse, there's always that kind of safety net there, right? You can never take it for granted, ever. But in the back of your mind, it's there. Number 821, Jolene Hall. Ready for money. Ohio bread. We did not need another Ohio bread. But this is Oni Hall's sister. Well, we didn't need another Ohio bread. I knew that. I'm aware. But I just assumed the way they were selling. And other ones sold good tonight. The Casanova Hall and Chicago Hall's brother, Kane Kaufman, paid $60,000 for, for their brother. I didn't know what he'd bring. Same thing. Ready for money. Exact same soccer. So when Jolene Hall went in, I'm thinking, and I felt bad too. And I kind of, I left it with with Steve if he wanted the filly. Steve wanted to buy a filly that is well-bred, that after he's done with them, you know, he, he could potentially breed them. And when I got there, I got the sense that Steve was interested in the filly too, but there was other fillies. And Steve and I, we look at a lot of the same horses, especially the fillies, Colts. The reason that Steve and Randy and Rob and all the people that always hang around, John and Jim, we all kind of run in lockstep, right? Most of the horses, when we did our top 10 lists in Ohio, six or seven of the horses were on all of our lists. It's the same way we look at the horses here. I looked at Jolene Hall, I said, slam dunk, 25 or under. This is Oni Hall's, you can't hide that. This is Oni Hall, made a half a million and dominated Ontario off and on for a year and a half or two years. This is Oni Hall's half sister by Ready for Money. It's a free horse kind of. I shouldn't say that. That's not fair. Disregard that. There's no such thing. But there's a significant safety net that comes with that filly. And it's $16,000, I mean, for the love of God. And I went out and looked at her. Amy, you looked at her too. She was perfect. Perfect. Now, you can always say big, strong. No, but she was a perfect size, nice medium filly, stood correct. But this is a good example of what we talked about, right? The videos. How the, if the videos aren't immaculate and pristine it's going to cost you and I'm sure if you're a breeder out there and you've watched you, nothing I, I've said this week about these videos shocks you every horse Amy picked went for a fortune because Amy did her due diligence looked at the breeding and then looked at the video to verify what she was seeing on paper and if both were A pluses both were great well Anthony this is a horse I love no I just wanted to look at it no no but if the horse looked good it went for a fortune because it checked all the boxes. And that's what happens. I don't think that this video for Jolene Hall did her any good. And what was the horse we bought? Remember the horse we bought that was lame in the literally lame in the video? Nothing but a dreamer. Nothing but a dreamer. You're not gonna find a yearling lame right in front. Might have jumped on itself, might have had a you know a, a pus pocket or something coming out of its foot, it's not lame. So again, Jolene Hall, I mean, it's as easy as buying Starbucks to buy her. And, and I felt bad too, because Steve had a number of other horses on his list. And I'll do that too. Oh, what do I care? Go ahead. Take the horse. He didn't know getting one. 
So I did tell him as we were leaving, hey, if, if you want this Philly, go ahead. It doesn't matter to me. We have 17 Ohio breads and, and a number of Phillies, and if this is a Philly you think is going to help and a, and a Philly that you want, then that's fine. It's not the end of the world. And um, obviously the next horse, you know, it was so it was so great because Amy wanted Memento Mori's brother but didn't. You know, she and it, it's funny because you hate buying brothers. She always hates when I look at brothers. And I don't say, oh, I want this one because the brother was awesome. No, I just know the brother, right? Well, here's the scoop. We have, what, and what a beautiful quote that is, my Jess. We'll load all the videos up. We went to the farm. We took pictures. We took videos. We saw everything. We'll load them all for you, too. So I'm going to be on Facebook tonight, but I'll put all the videos they made. They're like 20 seconds or something of the horse. I'll load, I'll load them all for you guys on YouTube tonight. You're not being specific. No, our weanlings, our, I'm sorry, our, I apologize, you're right, our weanlings in Ohio. We have seven of them are in Kentucky. We have seven of them here and one of them at Midland in Ohio. So I have messages for, I have videos for seven babies that we looked at here in Kentucky today. I took some pictures. Weanlings. What did I say? I said babies, right? You like to name one of them? Weanlings, yes, we let Dave Dave wants to name one of them. But one of the more beautiful ones, and I shouldn't say that, the tactical landing from Path of Totality is a stunner. Uh, Globetrotting's, is that Philly or Colt Globetrotting's? Colt. Globetrotting's Colt, beautiful. And then, and then the Capistranos. Oh my God, John, wait till you see this thing. They look so beautiful, and one of them is a Centurion ATM. Now, Memento Mori's brother is by Centurion ATM, but that is Kentucky Bonus and Kentucky sired for next year but the one that we have for my jazz that one's Ohio well Ohio and Kentucky now so rewind obviously you can say what you want there are two siblings out of this out of this family two two siblings one Kierkegaard K a state champion in New York the other Memento Mori a world champion it's really, really hard not to be excited about the Centurion ATM. Now this Colt, I would say a little bit shorter than that, a little bit more compact than Mori, but taller and look bigger, stronger shoulders, right? Stronger Colt. Sure, I like the Colt. I, I, drew, I was drawn towards him because of he was Memento Mori's brother. But at what point would you not go? If you walked a horse, if you hit a horse, go in the ring. Three good families on the page. Oh, and by the way, the first full, Kierkegaard K, was a New York champion that made what? I don't have it in front of me. I'm going to say half a million. That's 300. Who cares? The second one set the world record for two-year-old trotting geldings of 151 and four at the Red Mile five hours ago. Is that not a horse that everybody wouldn't want? I told everybody I was willing to pay 65, this pretty specific number, I said it, 65 to 70,000 is what this colt will bring. That's a window, that's a short window. He brought $67,000. Now, a number of <laughs> Memento Mori owners are here. So I don't know if there's going to be any shares to offer up of Neuromancer. Is that his name? What a yeah, dumb name. You gotta figure out what it means. That guy always names them I'll with meaning. It. Yeah, well, you he, should. He did it What's it mean? That oh, doesn't matter. Rainier did it. Oh, did? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, they're all regarding books. I yes. Think. Oh, it's a 1984 science fiction novel by William Gibson. Yeah, this guy always names them after books. That's cool. Tristan is his name. Really nice man. He's a, Kierkegaard is a philosopher, I believe. Isn't he? I think it was Chan. I'm interested to know if Aki changed it. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is all Tristan. This isn't hockey. This is Newtson Stan Newtson Trotting. Yeah, so was that stable. his name originally? Kierkegaard K? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Memento Mori, same thing. Anyway, um, two horses tonight. Amy didn't even get mad. That is how nice these horses were and easy to purchase. Is that she never even made a frowny face tonight. She tried to explain the side of not buying Memento Mori's brother. But I, I just aside from everything else, if you we just didn't have me. Yes, I did. I overruled you. I ignored you. Whatever you want. But at the end of the day, if we didn't have Memento Mori, say we had nothing to do with Memento Mori, right? And somebody else won with Memento Mori. Not our horse. 
And I say, geez, Andy, you know that horse that set the world record today? His brother is at the sale. I know he's by Centurion ATM. Let's go look at him. And we go and look at the colt that we looked at tonight. Nothing to do with Memento Mori. We still probably bid on him. I don't know if we go to 67. I don't know. But it would be pretty hard not to. Everything revolves on the Centurion ATM. Because if he's a Chapter 7, he's on Day 1. Just know? like Kierkegaard K was. Just like Memento Mori was. No, I think Kierkegaard didn't sell, but Memento Mori did. And he would have brought plenty of six figures. Probably 170, 180. Anyway, I don't have to convince anybody. 821 Jolene Hall, simple purchase. 921 Neuromancer, even simpler purchase. So that's why Amy didn't make any frowny faces tonight. We did a great job. Now, looking at the racing side of things, we had a pretty good day too. Aside from, you know, the world record. Aside from that, we had, uh, who do we have here? Tactical mounds, a little flat. We talked about that. Um, Megan was obviously, you know, she knows she has a, a, an uphill climb, but the Phillies, it's not like we believe she's good. We already know she's good. We know for sure she's good. So saying, oh, we'll have her good, you've already had her good once, and I'm fully confident you'll have her good again. Don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. Tonight was, today was an overnight. So tactical mounts. We'll get her right. Marching forth. Somebody say he looked pretty rough. Um, he's made a bajillion breaks his whole life. Was he at his best today? Maybe not. But he wasn't horrible. And what he did show is he wanted to do his work today. You might have said, oh, he did everything but run. But he did not run. He's a worker. Maybe touch him up a little bit. I think that left stifle bothers him a little bit. We'll let Tim take a look at that also. He was just beat at the wire. Second for second in 55. I thought the horse raced well. And he'll continue to race well. Momento Mori. I don't have to tell you about that. That was quite the surprise. Won the win. And two, absolutely the world record. Horse raced absolutely fantastic. Drabin. Not the greatest drive, but not the other world. Listen, Aaron Merriman's a tremendous driver. Just not the greatest drive today with Drebin, and I'm sure he'd tell you that too. It's not the end of the world. He raced good, finished third, just beat for second. Stay close. A winner. Because that's what winners do. They win. He's a nice horse, and anytime you put him in a position to win, he is going to choose to win every time. One second. Now look. Lonely Lakewood made a break coming off the card. He hasn't done that in a while. I didn't feel that I should call Chris and say, hey, you know, the only time I've seen him run is right off the car. you got to watch him. Where he made a break, I was a little surprised also. I thought when he got five, six steps off the car, he was fine. If you ask him going into the turn, he's, he just gets a little self-conscious. you just got to let him push into the turn, and then you can drive him. But if you try to push him into the turn, that's where he's liable to make a little bit of a mistake. But I've only seen him do it coming off the car. I've never seen him do it right there. It's it's an easy fix. Listen, the horse is he was six to five today. He'll be six to five next week, and he'll race like he's six to five next week. Also, J.K. Victory is in, hopefully coming out of a funk. Finished third today. It looked like he was going to be like fifth or sixth coming into the last turn, and fought back, fought off a horse to be third. Although he isn't awesome right now, he was pretty good tonight. Admiral Deal. I said to Amy, I said this horse. I thought he was going to be seventh coming into the last turn. I'm like, oh my god, this horse is not going to be that good. He was screaming at the wire. 53 and 4, probably pays 55, had to pace 27 seconds on the end of it. And looked great. Great drive by Travis Cullen. Very happy with what I saw from Admiral Deal. Chime Bell got picked off at the wire, not the end of the world. Still a little bumpy left time. We still got to work on this filly. I think that the issues that bother her are deep rooted. Nothing serious, but they're there. They're obvious, they're evident. I think we just have to work on those and she'll get better and better and better. And along the way, she can do in these classes. Perfect horse. She will get better as she needs to get better. That's my belief. And Chevron's bypass, a little flat day, a little scrambly in the first turn. I'm curious to, see, to hear what Jason thinks and, and what Luke thought of Chevron's bypass. Um, you know, I'm sure she was up a class today too. Raced great last week. Uh, and tonight, I was trying to convince myself she got locked in, but he's out, got the air, he's fishing for the earplugs in the last turn, he's, and he's got the whip in the left hand. Well, Luke is not left-handed, so I'm thinking if he's got the whip in the left hand, she's running in pretty good in the turns. Probably just got to do a little work on Chevron's bypass. We'll have Dr. Latessa look at her. Now, tomorrow, Saturday, we have Jim Bree racing in the last race. I'm going to Kentucky in the morning. I'm going to train Arson in the race bike, 
Grand Slam Dio in the race bike and uh, Gaslight Hall in the race bike. Want to make sure we get them tightened up and squared away for Corbin as we get closer to Corbin. Um, so Jim Barry is going to race tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Scotty's going to drive her. I believe Scotty's driving her. Yep, Scotty's going to drive Jim Barry. And then we have a gorgeous package. I'm excited. Little, I'm, I'm coming in a little over my fighting weight. I'm going to have to, uh, gonna have to cut down tomorrow. But uh, gorgeous package, Irresistible Sun, both racing in their perspective. Um, I guess these are grassroots finals tomorrow, I believe. Yep. And then Sunday, we're back to full slate of heavy work. Uh, Purple People Eater, Roser and Alexander, Freedom Hill, Fire and Shine, Love and, Love and Affection, and Widespread Panic will race on Sunday. Now you're all caught up. And you want to know Monday too? All Gas No Breaks looks like money in your mister. You were all caught up right up till Monday. We are done for Lexington 2024. I know I went over a little bit, but is there anybody I shouldn't have bought? I know I didn't need the Ready for Money Philly. And maybe Steve will take her. I don't know. It's fine with me. I'm happy to keep her. As I said, with that kind of breeding and that kind of confirmation, how she looks, simple, simple purchase. Is there anybody else you were concerned about? Or do you think we did a great job? Let me ask you this then, just before we go to bed. Who's your favorite purchase in the whole set? Oh, yeah, that's not fair. Just give me one. No. I don't even know mine, so Bye. we'll take 10 seconds to think about it. Here's the list. I'll give you the list. I'll give you, that's only fair. I'm going to give you the list right here. Purchases, there's the list. Top to bottom, top to bottom, you get to pick one of those horses. Oh, I think I know mine. I think I know mine. Oh, that one was good. Oh, uh... I can't I mean I just gotta pick my, my favorite one you're gonna pick the perfect skin. no I'm not she was so hard though I love that filly so much I didn't even see the ones you bought when I wasn't here blue rare that thing's a, a absolute tank riding Wait, the rodeo what's riding that? the rodeo is a cattle wash so the the hidden pedigree on this one was the ha like the pedigree isn't strong but the half brother Chris Lems drives it. This horse took a mark of 150 as a two-year-old and was third. Oh, we looked at that. Yes, we did. I had a video of it, and he was third to uh, Burke's Good Colt, uh, the one that we have the brother to, the sister to. We looked at it the morning I left. Is that Riding right? the roadie? No, I went and looked at this horse the day of the sale. The day of the sale. We looked at cattle. We looked at two cattle washes. This wasn't one of them. Oh. So this is a, a beautiful horse here. Uh, easy perch. One of those horses, big updates, right? Like, not quite as big as Morty's, but a big update. And uh, Jolene Hall, and we don't even have two, 921 on here, obviously, Maury's brother. Okay, moment of truth. Who's your favorite horse? Uh, I gotta be honest, I know who mine is. I can't lie. Who's your favorite? Royal Flush. Royal Flush? I, didn't, I thought you might say that. Mine is Pickpocket Sister. And I'll be honest, Pickpocket Sister's been long sold out. Everybody, I guarantee I have 25 emails from people saying, can I share, can I share, share? There's none. I didn't even get any. My favorite horse, this is the only reason I didn't say it right away, is because I didn't get any shares of Pickpocket Sister. You guys scooped them all off of me. I have none. So it is upsetting to me because I, I love this pedigree too. Um, I do love the perfect thing. I love all of them. Listen, I think, I think we did a hell of a job uh, at the sale. Truly, truly proud and happy, super surprised with more Memento Mori today. You know, you can say, oh, I thought he was that good. I never thought he was that good. 51 and four, that's a heck of a mile for a horse that's as big as Cruz. You know, and for you out there saying, oh, he's too small, you will never see a trotter go that fast as a two-year-old at the red mile that small for a long time. That is a tiny little horse that went in 51 and four today on the biggest track we race on in North America. And he did one heck of a job. So great job by Scotty. Great job again by Kathy and Eric. Great job by you and me. Great job by the kids staying awake. Even Addie Bear, she crashed, but she saw every horse that went through the ring that we looked at tonight. So I hope all you guys had fun following along, whether it be through the broadcast the first four days or through the videos with us. I hope the kids had fun. They played a little hooky today. and We got to see the babies today. Tomorrow we got to train at Red Mile and then off to Dayton. So that's a wrap for Lexington 2024. It was a tremendous sale. Take care.